Hey everyone, it's Ryan at GPI. This morning I'm going to go over some of the uh, things you need to do as far as remote tuning or if you're just tuning your car yourself, maybe this information will be helpful for you as well. I'm going to go from the top again. I did this about four or five years ago, I think. I figure I'll do a refresher. You know, a few things have changed. So along the way, we'll go through this. I'm going to take you through the HP Tuners website. I'm going to show you what you need to do to download the software. Uh, it will prompt you to install it on your PC and essentially that's where we're going to start. So once you hop on the HP Tuner site, I recommend downloading the, uh, the latest stable version, the production software, and also the beta software. There may be times where we want you to use the beta software because at times there are additional calibration tables available for us in the beta software that are not in the production software and vice versa. So sometimes we may bounce between two versions of software for uh, tuning and logging depending on the features for your car at that given time. So once you get those downloaded and installed on your PC, make sure it's easier to make sure that there's some desktop shortcuts if there aren't already from the initial install. You will ne then need to take your cable, hook it up to your device, open HP tuners, and you will need to go into the help tab which will have a drop down and basically you're going to get your cable information and you're going to need to go register that to HP tuners website. You're going to create a login because you're going to need credits from them to tune your vehicle on your cable. Credits are basically licenses for your vehicle. The credits license your VIN number, your vehicle, your control module serial number basically as a package to your device. So let's say that we tune your vehicle in person here. I've got to license it to my cable. Let's say you're six hours away from us and you go back to your home and then Maybe some things need touched up. Maybe you've made some changes. We need to retune, but you have HP tuners as well, but we didn't initially use your device. You will also have to have credits for your device as well, because like I said, the credits tie your vehicle to a device. You can't have, my credits won't work on your device, in other words. So you will have to have those credits again for your device. If that's what, you know, if we have to do some tuning with your device after the fact. How many credits will you need? That's also a question we get. It could be anywhere from two to three to eight <laughs> to up to 11 sometimes and more on some of the newer stuff. So it will vary depending on your vehicle. The easiest way to check for how many credits you're gonna need is to go to HP Tuner's site, go to their supported vehicles list and Check for your vehicle, your make and model, check your engine, and if we're tuning transmission as well, check the transmission module. That will tell you how many credits you need there. Now, when we're doing remote tuning, obviously you're just gonna have credits on your device. I don't have to have credits to alter a file and save a file. You just have to have credits on whatever device is flashing the tune into the vehicle. So, remote tuning, you don't have to double up on credits like you would if you had your own cable um, after we had tuned your car with our cable, you know, you would have to purchase credits again for that. But registering the device, back to that, there's a verification code in the help uh, menu on drop down in the VCM editor. You take that, you're going to go over to HP Tuner's site. You're going to register that device. Uh, let me go into the login here. My devices. You're going to see that we've got a huge list of devices as I scroll down through here because we resell HP tuners and they all go into our login as our devices. Um, our shop cables, I put notes out there too, but basically you're going to import your device. You're going to have your serial number and your verification ID that you got out of that help drop down in the VCM editor and you're going to import that device. Uh, and then that device is in there. Now you should be able to buy credits on the site. And when that purchase is complete, well, then you're going to jump back over to VCM editor. You're going to drop back into that help menu again, and you're going to resync your device. So when you resync your interface, you have to be connected to the internet, obviously, and have your device connected. It's going to resync. So any new credits that were purchased, it will, it will download those to the, to the cable. 
I just ring seat mine. I didn't have any new cable or credits on this cable. I only use this cable on the Global V, like uh, B vehicles like the C8s and uh, the Global B trucks, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have much action going on on this cable right now. Anyways, I've got a customer's uh, tune filed up right now. Uh, it's just kind of a sample thing here we're working with. I did some remote work on this and that's what I've been working on this morning, some remote stuff. Once you have your your software downloaded. Now you have your account registered. You have your credits purchased. You've resynced your device. When you go to flash the vehicle, it's going to pop up. It's going to show license options. You click that. If you have credits available, it will let you select specific for these. If you do not, well, you're going to have to go purchase credits if you already didn't do that. Uh, in this case, uh, for Nick's car, we would have to have four for the ECM, four for the TCM. I would select specific on those and I would hit OK. That would apply those credits to that cable and then we would then be able to flash with the right vehicle icon. 99.9 .9 times out of 100, I'm just going to have you do a right calibration, not a right entire. The difference is the right and tire we would do if we were changing an operating system or doing a custom operating system. So unless instructed, do not do right and tire, just do a right calibration. Keep in mind, these later model vehicles a lot of times have to be connected to the internet, uh, especially for uh, flashing the TCM side of things. They have to be connected to the internet to read the calibration files out on 17 and newer vehicles, ECM and TCM. The ECM will flash without internet. The TCM will not flash without internet, so uh, you know you can use your hotspot on your cell phone or whatever to have good internet connection if you're out on the road, uh, out in a remote place doing some tuning. As long as you have good hotspot signal, you should be able to use that for your uh, TCM flashing. Um, something that you may or may not need to tune, uh, I don't have in this tune file here. Uh, actually, I do, yeah what we call the fuel supply control module or the chassis control module. It's the same thing, it's just designated in different terms depending on the year model. Basically it is the control module that controls the fuel pump, uh, the low side fuel pump, and it has some other functions as well. Like on the 6th gen and the C7 cars, you know, the AFM valves that are in the exhaust at the back of the car, sometimes with exhaust modifications, those will throw the P12E, P12E7 through P12FF, maybe P12E3 through P12FF. Anyways, that long list of codes is all from uh, the uh, AFM valves in the back of the car in the exhaust system there. Those may have to be turned off. If they have to be turned off, they're not in the ECM, they're not in the TCM. They are in the CCM or the FSCM, whichever one your car has. It may take one to three credits on that module additional on top of the credits you needed for your engine and transmission module. So. That may be something that's needed if it hasn't already been tuned out previously, if you've had any prior tuning. So just keep that in mind. It's not an always thing, but more times than not, you will probably have to have those credits to, uh, to get that result. Otherwise, the next big thing we run into is the logging side of things, right? So I'm not going to get into a lot of tuning practice on this video, more so how to operate the VCM editor and the VCM scanner. So. You know, obviously the top left icon up here is going to open a file. Uh, it's going to open from basically the last place it opened a file from. So wherever you save your files, if it's to desktop, if it's in the documents, HP tuners folder, they have a tunes and samples folder. I save my tune files and log files in there by customer name. Save them to your desktop. You can save them in a documents folder. It doesn't matter. Just remember where you save them. That's what I would recommend doing. Uh, it's basically, it's a simple Windows system. I mean, I think everybody for the most part has used Windows on a PC now. Um, it's very simple. So, you know, take note of your file location. That's where you're going to open your files that we send you. And then you're just going to flash that into your car. Obviously, the ignition has to be on, engine not running. And that's that. You may even notice on some of the newer software, the production and the new beta software, oftentimes to even open a file, to open the complete file, you may have to have your device plugged up 
any TCM files that are non-downloadable uh, or that need internet access to, uh, to use those, flash them, read flash, you will probably have to have your device plugged up for the entire tune file to open. Uh, that's something new that's now come along in the recent past, semi-recent past. And that's it really for the flashing side of things. It's pretty simple. We send you a file, you open it within VCM editor, you flash it in the car. Then we're going to move to data logging. So that's where most of the questions come from. So you can see on my desktop, I've got multiple versions of HP tuners, um, Holly. We're not currently offering really remote support on Holly, but we probably will at some point. Uh, you will see our remote tuning lineup expand. And then some other tuning softwares we use for various things within the shop here that we don't offer remote tuning support on. Sorry guys, just can't, you know, you can't be a jack of trades on, on all of this stuff. You know, it's some of the stuff we have to have hands on. You know, I can't, can't possibly be perfect with all these softwares, but these are things that we need on a daily basis within the shop, you know, with things coming here. So for this example, we're just going to open up the uh, VCM production scanner. I, I named it that. It doesn't come downloaded at that name. Uh, VCM5 production scanner. I have the beta. I have version 4 software and version 4 beta software just in case I need to bounce back and forth and look for some tables that may or may not be in some of the newer stuff. So once we open the scanner, two biggest things we run into. And the layout file, really, that's really one big thing we run into because the layout file is only this portion on the right side of the dash here. That is this portion of the dash. See the layout changes. This is the current layout we use for most of our remote tuning applications. That doesn't even matter to me because that's what you see when you're logging. You know, if you don't use our layout file, you just won't see it the way we see it. The channels are the one most important thing in the scanner to get right. And I don't know what people do when they download these things, but there seems to be some difficulty with downloading and they try to open that file. You can't just open that file. It is in a format that has to be opened within the VCM scanner, guys, right here. Open, open channel config. These are my recents that I've used. Some Coyote, I've got a C8 channel list, some LS1 stuff that I do speed density tuning with, and then an E38 and DI Gen 5 LT stuff I have in one. You're gonna open that. And that's where it's gonna open this file. Watch, I'll go to my LS1B. You see the channel list changed. I go to my C8 stuff. Some of you guys wanna see what I logged there. There we go, that's what I'm logging on C8 stuff currently. It's that simple. You have to save our channel list to where you can open it, where you can find it and open it. I have these saved in their default spot, which is gonna be in the documents, HP tuners, VCM scanner, channel configs. Save our file that you get in our email and it's downloadable on the website as well. Save that file in documents, HP tuners, VCM scanner, channel configs. That's where the channel file gets saved. Save it, live it, learn it. That's the most important thing. Without that channel list, you're gonna get a default email back that says, sorry, your provided data didn't include our channel list. Please download the channel list because I can't see the data I need to see if you're not using our channels. The default channels don't get it done. It's very vague. There's very few channels on there that are of value to us. We need to see more than that and that's why we have our specific channel list. The layout list, the layout file is very similar. You're gonna save that layout file in documents, HP tuners, VCM scanner, layouts. The files have the same file extension, XML, but they are different files. So the layout file gets saved in the layout folder. The channel file gets saved in the channel folder. And that's it. The layout has to do, it pertains with what's on the screen to the right here on the bar graphs. And you know the channel list is ultimately what matters. That's what's on the left side. 
If the channels aren't on the left side, they're not going to log on the right side on the bar graph. It's that simple. You're not going to get that data. Uh, histograms, I don't really even use them that much for the type of stuff we're remote tuning. It's very basic. I don't need them. I do not need to see, you know, plotted histograms. I can get it done without those. So I'm not worried about those. If you have a different wideband than the two I have on here. So the two I have on my list here, my channel list, you can see wideband EQ ratio one. That is the channel for the AEM X series OBD wideband that we sell on our website and we recommend to you guys for our remote tuning services. It plugs onto your DLC port under your dash and then the HP tuners cable plugs directly on it. So it is a pass through cable connection that uh, communicates to HP tuners via CAN communication. There's no external wiring into HP tuners with it. You don't have to have the pro cable. You can have just a standard cable. And that one is the one that we recommend for simplicity's sake for remote tuning. The other channel I have on here is our uh, Ballinger AFR 500 uh, V2 uh, with the wide, the wide version. That is essentially, we have an ECM 1000 wideband on our dyno and that channel has the same math formula as what our dyno uh, wideband setup has, which uses an NTK sensor. It is a wide scale sensor. It's not the normal one. It reads a little wider scale. That's what we have on our dyno. That's why I have it defaulted and saved on our tuning list. If you have any other wideband that you're logging that we need to see for remote tuning, which we do, if you have a wideband, we need to see it on remote tuning. Uh, you need to do what you need to do to get it wired in with the pro feature um, option on your cable and you're going to need to set that channel up. So you right click over here on the channels, add channel. There's a bunch of them pre-configured in here. External inputs. You know, if you're using the pro link, you know, you got your AD inputs one or two. Okay, let's add that. So I added two, okay, MPVI two, AD input two. You're gonna transform that into oxygen sensor, innovate. Here's the ECM AFM 1000, 1500, Ballinger, a couple AEM models here. These are pre-configured wideband channels that already have all the math done for you. You can see the function here. Most of the time you're going to be using one of these widebands. Makes life simple. You just select which one you're going to log. Okay, so let's say a LC1 because we're old school. There you go, LC1. You would right click over here. You go to your chart layout, change this EQ1, which was currently our AFR for our uh, a, uh, AEM pass-through sensor. And just go to a LC one there you go yes sounds good you can change your min max limits right there but anyways that will put it right there so what you're seeing on the left side of the screen here will be on the right side of the screen and that would be it for your wideband deal hopefully this is helpful guys thank you for tuning in if you have any questions or anything obviously reach out to us through our support channels tune in next time we'll see you then